Hello out there, this is the Mugwump, and I just wanted to take a minute and tell you why the arrest of the Pharma Bro is a bad thing. So what's the problem, right? He's a big bad guy who did a big bad thing and then life came around and bit him in the ass. Everything makes perfect sense. We should all feel really good, right? Hey, the system works. Hey, everything makes sense. Hey, we should just turn to him and say something like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. So take that, you piece of shit. Yeah. Karma's yeah. a bitch. Uh-huh. How's it taste? Yeah. That clip was not taken out of context, by the way. It's from an ETC report on this whole pharma bro debacle that's going on. So what what is the problem? Well, let's take a minute and problematize the event. A guy that works in finance was arrested for securities fraud. For Kelly essentially ran his companies like a Ponzi scheme, where he used each subsequent company to pay off defrauded investors from the prior company. First off, I'll admit it, I'm basically against it anytime anybody goes to prison because the American justice system is essentially unjust. But, assuming for a moment that people do go to prison for legitimate reasons, um, I just want everyone to take a minute and try to remember the last time they heard the phrase Ponzi scheme. Oh, right, it was this guy. Does anyone remember this face from a couple of years ago? It's Bernie Madoff from the previous financial crisis. That's the one where everybody was ripping everybody off, and somehow this is the only guy that went to jail over it. Okay, so what is a Ponzi scheme? Yay, Wikipedia. A Ponzi scheme is a fraudulent investment operation where the operator, an individual or organization, pays returns to its investors from new capital paid to the operator by new investors rather than from profit earned by the operator. I don't know if you know this, but since the repeal of Glass-Steagall, this is the exact formula in which all commercial banks operate on. So let's be clear, we know that the people who are participating in these various financial games are up to no good all the time. We know it. We also know that the laws of the country being what they are, that anybody under close scrutiny could probably be convicted or at least indicted for something, especially involving our personal taxes. And this goes double for anybody who's done anything in the financial world beyond anything personal. So maybe we're not idiots, or at least not total idiots. But then we have to ask ourselves, why is it that we really think this guy is being arrested? And of course, you know the answer. Anyways, Martin Screlly, who goes by the nickname Pharma Bro, uh, is a 32-year-old entrepreneur and financial and pharmaceutical executive who made headlines earlier this year when it went public that his company, Turing Pharmaceuticals, acquired a drug named Daraprim, which helps treat HIV and AIDS patients. They went ahead and raised the price of a pill from $13.50 to $750. So I'm not here to sympathize with this kind of bullshit. That, that's not what I'm here to do. Uh, I understand people's indignance at this kind of thing, especially because he happened to pick AIDS, which, even though not as big a deal now, over the last um, 20 years, has been a cause celeb and part of our sort of permanent humanitarian crisis. But I still don't think that's the real reason he was arrested. I don't think so. I think that the real reason comes a little bit in the same video from ETC that I've been using. Obviously, this is a terrible thing to do, but for whatever reason, Shkreli just relished in the controversy and even defended the price hike. It's so subtle, you may have missed it. For whatever reason, he relished the controversy and defended the price hike. I remember when that happened. He essentially said, I don't understand why this is such a big deal, or rather, I do, but I don't care, because this is what pharmaceutical companies do. This is what all companies do. I've simply taken one aspect of my company to its logical conclusion. And that's completely true. This, to me, is the real reason that he's being arrested. The real reason why the protections that seem to be afforded to absolutely every other company no longer apply to him. He broke uh, an unspoken rule of his community. He went out and said, oh, we all do this. I don't know why I'm so special. Well, that's a big deal. It's not unlike what happened with David Cameron in the UK. He was part of a special club, the British Elite. He didn't fulfill his duties to that club, and as punishment, part of the ritual that he participated in, the pig thing, was outed, because that's the rules. You adhere to our rules, or 
all the things that we did in secret become public because you really did do them. And it's the same thing here. He didn't adhere to the unspoken rules of the financial community. And so the ritual he participated in, essentially doing what he had to do to get his company started, gets outed and all of a sudden becomes free for everybody to pick clean. This is the same thing that happened with Bernie Madoff. And I'm not here to say, oh, well, it turns out these guys are really great. That's not the point. The point is that they're just doing the same thing that everybody else is doing in their community. And every once in a while, for reasons, financial crisis, media uproar, something, all the sins of a community need to be piled on somebody or something in order to wash them clean. And I think we all know what that's called. That's right. It's called a scapegoat. Still, the question remains, though, what's the problem? Couldn't think of a better goat, right? Well, there's one more component to this that I think makes it a true problem. And yes, I'm going to use ETC one more time. I really do like their show. I'm not saying they're bad people, but they really just emblemize it perfectly. Mm -hmm. So this is just a great day for humanity, and truly one of the quickest, most satisfying examples of karma that we've ever seen. And there it is. I want to make a plea to anybody out there who is trying to think critically. Take people at their word, but don't trust what they say. That is to say, if I were to take these guys at their word right now, I would say that they really believe this is an act of karma, a metaphysical interaction in the real world, in the material world. But, if I were to trust what they say, I would take it in its ironic sense that, oh yeah, these things happen, the big world turns, and if you like scan it for meaning, then you can find instances of karma, let's say, here. And this is being used ironically, and we're actually really distant from the whole thing. No, that's not true. And when the people out there are using the hashtag karma, they mean it seriously. And they can only, of course, express it ironically because we're in this age where we have to all pretend like we don't really believe things, and as a result, of course, we believe them twice as much. Be careful about your so-called common sense. Exterminate all rational thought. These people are, in fact, naming the police and the justice system as an abs abstract cosmic entity dealing out moral justice. And that is not what they're meant to do. Even if you could construe that that's what they have done, which I don't, I don't see it that way, but even if you did, it would still be wrong. It would still be a bad thing. I think Kafka was right when he said that for a modern, secular, non-religious man, bureaucracy, state bureaucracy, is the only remaining contact with the dimension of the divine. So that's why it's bad. That's why this arrest is a bad thing. Burroughs said, a functioning police state requires no police. But Burroughs had a tendency to skip steps. Before we can get to the point where we require no police, we must have this intense experience of police activity. The state already has the full monopoly on violence. No problem there. Don't let them have this. Don't let them have the abstract field of meaning as well. Because once they do, once we see a cop every time there seems to be this feeling, once we see a police officer intervene every single time, then they will also have the monopoly on violence in the abstract field of meaning, and we will be in a place where we have a functioning police state, and therefore no police. We don't want this. Nobody wants this. And it's not worth celebrating, like, a stupid moment of bread and circuses where we watch some poor guy get torn to bits. And for that we give up absolutely everything else. And that's it for now.